Live from St. Louis Home Fires on Manchester Road, welcome to the Big Barbecue Show with your host, Frank Schmer. Bob Trudnack, barbecue guru, chatting all things temperature control. Let's get in Bob's head and the direction of barbecue guru. Let's just start out for our listeners. Um, these temperature controllers, specifically the barbecue guru, have really revolutionized the way guys cook in competitive atmospheres. But now you see the guru transcending that into backyard cooking. What was the inspiration in the beginning for creating a temperature controller like the barbecue guru? Well, you know, it started back in 2003. Uh, We have a, um, a valve business, a temperature control valve business, and we cater to um, the industrial side of things, you know, steam engine locomotives, chemical plants, pulp and paper plants. So we were, we were designing these temperature-controlled valves. And we got a call one day from a, a customer who said, hey, you know, I have one of these ceramic grills. I'm, I'm down in Florida, and, you know, I buy your valves. Do you do any temperature controls for barbecue? And we said, no, but, you know, give us a few months and we might be able to come up with something. And we'd love to cook. You know, we'll, we'll jump in there and, and try to develop a product. And it took us a few months and we figured it out. Uh, we started with a little mechanical control and that went to uh, the controls you see nowadays, the electronic controls with power draft. So it was kind of a fun challenge for us to add to our product line. And we never imagined it would, you know, take off and be what it is today. That is so cool to hear how great to hear a, a great idea is born simply by a question. <laughs> what a really? neat story. Exactly. Yeah, and, and then, I mean, you were able to address a problem that every competitive cooker and backyard cooker encounters, and that is how do you control the temperature? So what problems does that temperature controller solve for a cook? So... You know, we all know barbecue takes time and effort. It takes some know-how. It takes experience. And, you know, we all want to get involved in it. It's a, it's a fun hobby. There's a lot to learn about it. And with or without a control, we're going to have fun. But we want to bring people into our world of barbecue. We want to teach people how to cook well and slow on charcoal. And there's a challenge there. And it's, you know, doing these overnight cooks, cooking pork butts or briskets or even ribs, you know, four, five, six hours, is getting that temperature controlled. How do I have time in my busy life to do it? Um, what we've done is we've eliminated the, the fact that you need to check on the cooker and adjust dampers for weather conditions, for temperature change, uh, for different things that happen throughout the cook. So we use this power draft system to kind of give you that you know, give you that, um, you know, that safety feature, that, that little safety net. So it's controlling the temperature that you set, and it maintains it for you. And we all know, in, whether you're doing competition barbecue or backyard stuff, you know, there's a lot to do. You're making your rubs, you're making your sauces, you're trimming your meats. There's, there's a lot to do. So this kind of takes that, that challenge of adjusting dampers and maintaining control no matter what you're cooking in and sets that aside for you and controls it for you. So now you have all this time to do other things. Well, Bob, I think, uh, this is Kevin, but I think one of the biggest advantages to what you've created is not just for the competition, for the backyard cooks, because, you know, I've got four kids, and we have a lot of activities. And most yeah. of the time when you're going to barbecue, you're barbecuing on the weekends, right? So exactly. I can throw a pork butt on Saturday morning, go to my kid's soccer game, basketball, whatever it is. I don't have to worry about it for those couple hours that I'm gone. That's really That's right. Uh, I, to, in my yeah, my perspective, I think that's maybe the biggest advantage to what you've done. That's that's exactly right. We're bringing more people with busy lives into the hobby of barbecuing because we're making it easier for them to do it. Right. So let me ask you this about your actual product. You've got three different models, correct? Can you explain yeah. what the difference is in those three models? Yeah, sure. The lower end one, I guess you can say, is like a like the simple one or the, you know maybe the starter control is the party cube. Party Q uh, developed over the years. It was called different controls over the years, and we've developed it to what it is today. It's a single probe control. So it, it's self-contained as well. It has a 6.5 CFM fan. It's cubic feet per minute. So it's how much, 
when I say CFM, it's how much air blows into the cooker per minute. 6.5 okay. CFM fan is meant for backyard-type cookers, Weber Smoky Mountains, kettles, ceramic grills, anything small uh, backyard. And it has one pit probe. So you set the temperature, you put your four AA batteries in, you get 30 to 40 hours of cook time out of it, and it's a set-and-forget control. And it's very easy. To, it's just plug-and-play. Just set it and let it go to work. And it's meant for small cookers. That's our party cube. That is great. The, the DigiQ is our most popular control. That has a pit probe and a food probe. It's got some more features to it. It's a aluminum molded box. It's very heavy duty. And you can set your cooking temperature and your meat done temperature. And then it scrolls back and forth between them. And there's a lot of different features in there. And then we have our CyberQ control. So that's CyberQ just your... Wi-Fi. You can connect that to any web-enabled device. And you can control it from a smartphone, from an iPad, things like that. So we have the whole gamut of controls, whatever you like, simple or, you know, more techy. We got something for everybody. So let me just ask a quick question about the CyberQ because that intrigues me. I, I have not had the chance to use something with a wireless feature. At my backyard, that's easy. I've got wireless in my house. It would connect. What about at a competition? Would you still be able to use that wireless function at a competition? Yeah, yeah. Actually, the, uh, the cyber queue that we have out on the market now has hotspot. So you can it go does. direct to your phone no matter where you are. So I can be in my competition trailer. I have my cookers out back. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm laying in my bunk. I want to check on things, pick up my phone, go to the IP address. I can see all my temperatures right there on my phone and my iPad. So all you Very need is hotspot enabled on your on your iPad, your tablet, your phone. All you need is hotspot enabled. That's it. And there's hotspot right in the That's control. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and one of the things, I just, just was kind of chatting with Fritz off air. One of the things that's neat is you think of the in terms of the low and slow long cooks. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Fritz, you just told me that you, you have used a barbecue grill even for hot and fast type of cooks to keep that temperature up. Yeah, I mean, I, the... Uh... Uh, the Guru is an amazing product. I mean, I, I use it overnight all the time, but um, but I like cooking hot and fast, and and I have uh, I have cranked up. I mean, it could, the you know I I take it up to about 350, and uh, cool. you got to watch it a little bit a little bit more because that fan you know it it, it does its, it does what it's supposed to do, um, and you know I don't peek at it as often, um, but I mean it, it works it works really well. I mean I I trust it um, for using it slow or or fast. That's cool. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, so, go ahead, Bob. I was going to say that, that you know the cooker itself, you, the temperature range is 32 degrees Fahrenheit up to 425. Now, obviously, you're not going to use it at 32, but that's the temperature range we put in the system. So you can use it from anything from cold smoking, you know, at you know 60, 70, 80 degrees, if you can get your fire that low. Huh. And, you know, we can uh, talk for hours about all that, but. You can, and it goes up to 475. So if you wanted to cook at 400, 425, you can do that easily with the control. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. I was just talking, it was just a week or two ago, we talked about wanting to try cold smoking some cheese. That would make... Oh, yeah. I do that yeah, all the It time. seems like the key, too, to this barbecue guru yeah. is the versatility of it. Yeah. I mean, how you can use it in so many different applications. Hey, Bob, let's get back to a few questions. I heard that you put together a barbecue beginner sort of starter kit. Why did you think that would be helpful, and how can our listeners hear more about it? Yeah, we did. Um, the starter kit, is uh, it, it's got a lot of great accessories in it. And, you know, I hear all the time when I'm talking barbecue with people, like, you know, I got this smoker, and I got a bag of charcoal, and I bought some meat, and I really don't know what I'm doing. You know, I can buy the stuff. But I don't know how to use it. I don't know what to do. You know, I need I need something that kind of guides me. So what we did was we put together not only a bunch of you know how to videos on the website, but we put this starter kit together that has a lot of basics. It has hearth gloves for picking up hot grapes. It has hot food gloves for picking up hot pork butts, briskets, things like that. There's a brisket huh. knife, like a slicer, chef's knife meat injector, you know, some uh, sauce and rub, you know, things like that. There's a bag of smoke wood chips. You know, just a, this box of goodies to get you started 
and it's got all the accessories to make it convenient for you to do your first cook and cooks throughout. So that's that's what the starter kit is all about. Yeah, and while we're talking about this, oh, it is. It's such a great idea. It's a great idea. And I was on your website earlier today, and while we're on this topic, tell our listeners where they can find you, either on Facebook or on your website. Yeah, our website is bbqguru.com. You can go to BBQ Guru Facebook. Uh, BBQ Bob 11 is my Instagram page. Uh, You can find us on Twitter, BBQ underscore guru. We're all over. And we're always t- taking pictures of great barbecue, talking barbecue. We're all about it. Um, so that's where you can so, find us. So let me ask you a question. Barbecue Guru has exploded across the country. When you came up with the product and started to sort of ride this wave of barbecue popularity, did you ever think barbecue competition and barbecue in general would be as popular as it is right now? You know, it, it was very interesting. When we first started making the control and I start looking into the industry, I saw one of the first um, things that came up on Google was uh, Memphis in May. And we went to Memphis. That was like my, one of my first contacts. And I was like, wow. Now you're amazing. talking Kevin's language. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a great contest to be your first, right? And we went there with the backpack full <laughs> right. control yep. and just looked around and met people. And said, you know what, maybe we can get one or two people to try these controls on their cooker and just see what we can show them what it's all about. And people, you know, a lot of people were skeptical. They're like, you know, what do you got here? You can't put a computer on a fire. You can't control a fire with a computer. What are you doing? <laughs> and so that, that was like the, the first reaction. But once people started to use it and realize, wow, this is pretty cool and it works, you know, and, and everybody in barbecues is so amazing. Such, such great people. Um, but no, I never imagined it would be what it is. And it's just, it was very exciting to be there from kind of the beginning. You know, uh, barbecue competitions have been around a lot longer than I've been doing them. But we got in there in the early 2000s and it's taken off not only in, in barbecue areas, but all around the country. You know, Pennsylvania, New England. Yeah, I mean, you really did. You got in on the ground floor. That's when it started exploding with pit, with pit masters and everything else on TV. Yeah. Bob, question for you. It's probably a very unfair question unless you do know this off the top of your head, but you've been doing this for over 10 years now and you're a part of the scene. Any idea how many barbecue guru units you have sold? <laughs> Jeez. Um, I can only guess. And yeah. if I had a guess, uh, 100,000 units, maybe 150,000 units. Wow. That is so cool. I, I I knew it had to be a monster number, and the reason is, and it's truly meant as a compliment to you, I see them everywhere. And seeing them everywhere, you know, I've done a lot of competitions both in Memphis and St. Louis areas. I see them everywhere. So it's just, it's almost become one of those utilities that you feel like you're required to buy when you get a, a smoker. That's how huge the gurus are now. Right, right. And you know what? It's been a big part of competition barbecue, like you said, uh, for the first you know, number of years. And then word of mouth is a big deal, right? So everybody knows competition barbecue guy and, you know, they live in their neighborhoods and people want to be like them and it trickles down to the backyard. So it's, it started out as a very, you know, hardcore group of barbecuers for the first so many years buying these. But now it's just taking off to the everyday person who wants to get to the hobby. And now we're seeing the numbers. Yeah, absolutely. It's just astronomical. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I mean, Kev, you and I have chatted uh, in the past about maybe when the turn down in the economy back in 2007, 2008, that right. people, yeah. rather than going out, tried to elevate their cooking in the backyard yeah. that coincidentally corresponded with the same time uh, the popularity of barbecue took off. And I think it all sort of is this big, giant machine now yeah. um, with no end in sight. I, I agree. And, Bob, what you're, what the gurus uh, allows you to do is bring that into the backyard. I tell my friends all the time that get their first cooker, hey, why do one chicken when you can do two or why do two if you can do four? You cook them, right. you learn how to freeze things, and then you've got, really, when you break it down, extremely cheap meat that you can freeze into family-sized portions to be used for weeks or months or whatever it is. You add the guru Absolutely. into that mix, and then it just made your life, like we said, a family life that much easier. Absolutely. And you have all these little, 
you know, um, genres of cooking that kind of take off. The sausage making, you know, the cured meats. People are doing the right. cold smoking, the cheeses. They're doing their holiday turkeys, the hams. So it's getting, just bringing people more into the world of cooking and cooking outdoors. Uh, and it's, yeah. it's yeah. I love it. I love all of it. Yeah. Yep. So, Bob, in the few minutes that we got remaining, I heard you have some tips and tricks, videos on your website, that type of thing. Can you explain more to our listeners about these tips and tricks, videos, and uh, and all the other neat things that you had on your website that I saw today? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, like I said, you know, there's a lot of people who are getting into the hobby, and they're buying their first smoker, and they don't really know what to do. So I got a lot of basics up there. Uh, we're talking about the proper tools proper accessories to use you know i saw one guy who was trying to pick a brisket up with a pair of tongs and you know it's as simple as hey you know put the tongs <laughs> down and grab the, the hot rubber gloves and pick up your meat that way right. you know you're not, you're not going to drop it yeah. on the floor uh a great little trick that was taught to me years and years ago that i think is just fantastic for the backyard guy the competition guy the caterer you know beef drippings or your pork drippings or whatever it is get your au jus and pour it into a like a big mouth water container or or a juice container. Put the cap on it tight and throw it in the fridge or the freezer for a while and turn it upside down. And all that fat sits at the top and all the gelatin separates out and sits at the bottom. So because it's upside down in the fridge, now you can once it's congealed, you can take the top off and squeeze out the gelatin and the fat stays behind in the container. Now you can warm that up and add it back to your meat when it's cooked. And that's just a burst of flavor and moisture. So there's a lot of things like that on there that just teach you how to take it to the next level. Great tip. Yeah, no, those are great tips. And real quick, just to give our listeners an idea on the price points or price ranges of these three different temperature controllers, give us an idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Party Q is $149. Bucks. Um, very affordable. Use that, like I said, any kettle. Ceramic grills, Weber Smoky Mountain, things like that. Uh, the DigiQ controls, now it's going to depend on your adapter and your fan. There's different size fans for different cookers, but they're all you know around the 280 range. And then you have your CyberQ control, which is about $90 more. Um, so you're in that 370, 380 range, you know, it could be a little more if you want two fans. You know, some of the big offset cookers or homemade cookers require two large fans. So then you're going to kind of build your package that way. So anything from $149 yeah, and I gotta tell you, Kevin, up to I... the 400s and, you know, depending on the cooker you have, and you'll be set. Very yeah. reasonable. And, well, and i got to tell you, Kevin and I were chatting before the show, how many Wagyu briskets do you have to mess up by right. not <laughs> like yeah, barbecue that's, guru that's, before yeah. you decide, hey, you know what, this really isn't that expensive. No, and you took the words out of my mouth, Frank. Bob, that's what I was going to say is it really is giving yourself just that much more of a guarantee that you're the, the <laughs> turn out great. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to worry about, you know, wasting three or four big pieces of meat to get it right. We're going to teach you how to get it right the first right. time. And you're going to be much happier with yourself and you're going to cook more. We'll have to have you on again. And uh, next time you come on, we'll have to have you just on with, with tips. You you seem to know a lot. Just temperature control. Oh, I can you, talk we'd love to have you back long. on again and, and chat a little more with you. Even in Disney World, he still wants to talk barbecue. You got to tip your cap. Oh, to I gotta love that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm standing hey, out Bob, here. Hey, uh, Bob. Thank, uh, thank the family. Yeah, I'm out here at the house we're in, um, and I can see people cooking on their charcoal grills, and I'm ready to run over there and start talking barbecue to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, slip up a party cue. <laughs> I tell you what, Bob. Thank your family for allowing you to take a few minutes. We can tell it's your passion; it's our passion too. Um, we're going to say so long, but thanks for joining us today on the Budweiser Big Barbecue Show. All right, guys, take care. It was a great time. Hey, have thanks a great so much, night, Bob. You All too. Right, bye. That was Bob Trudnick from Barbecue Guru on the PM Barbecue Hotline. He's got a passion. Oh, man, yeah. And to identify an issue like that and then take it full circle. I mean. Not just an inventor and a business owner, but entrepreneur. And I think that word maybe gets used a little too much, but identified a problem or someone helped him identify a problem. And holy cow, did he come out guns a-blazing on how to solve it? All started with a question. Yeah. I think that's so cool.